Now that we've successfully installed PHP, it's time to learn a little bit about how the internet works. This way we'll understand why we actually need to learn PHP. Okay, so so far what we've done is we've been creating what is called HTML on our pages. So if I go to my file here, you see that this is all HTML. Okay, so far what we've learned is HTML. Now, why do we need PHP? Well, this HTML represents this and this. Okay, so if you've noticed, this is a static page, meaning that no matter how many times I refresh the page, I'll get exactly the same information because this information was typed directly onto the page. There's nothing that will make this information change in any way or form regardless who is accessing this page. So this is what we call a static page because everything is static. Now, in contrast to a website like Facebook, now Facebook will open a profile page. Now, depending who you are, the profile page will display, will display the actual name it will display your about section and give you the right information about you or whichever profile you're looking at. So meaning the information changes depending on certain things. So in this case, it depends on who has logged in. And so the information has changed to suit the person that has logged in. Now, in order to achieve such a result, that's where PHP comes in because PHP can process information and give you an answer depending on the input. All right, so a quick look at how this process actually plays out on the internet. So if you are sitting on your desk with your computer and you're on the internet, the moment you make a request to a website, let's say you are requesting a static website like the one we just created, so an HTTP request will be sent to the right server on the internet. And that server is going to give you exactly the file that you've requested for. So in case of profile.php, it's going to return the same profile page as it is and display it on your computer. So your computer will understand HTML and it will display it there. And the cycle continues. If you click a link, it will look for that page, go to the server, it will send a request to the server, the server will look for that page and send back the HTML. Now, something slightly different happens when there's PHP installed on this server and the page you are requesting has some PHP. So when you send the request, the PHP is going to process the information on that page and the result of that processing is HTML, which will be sent back to your computer. So from the perspective of your computer, nothing has changed because it sent a request just like last time and it received HTML. So as far as it is concerned, nothing has changed. However, on a website where people are actually logging into the website, like Facebook, for example, once you, say you send an HTTP request to open a specific profile, it will have to go into the database. So the server will check. Now this is PHP that's doing that. So the PHP will send a request to the database to check, does this person exist in this database? And then if the person exists, a result will be returned. And when that result is returned, that name will be processed by PHP and added to the HTML that it's creating. If it needs to go back to the database, it would do so many times throughout reading that page. So when it gets to the end of the page, it's done processing and then it's going to send the result, which is in form of HTML, back to the user. So a sample of PHP would look something like this. This is uh, some PHP here. So don't mind what this PHP is about, but this is what it might look like. So the server is going to read this page one line at a time, process it one line at a time. And then when it gets to the end, it's going to know that all the PHP has been processed. And then the result will be the HTML that is going to send back to 
the user. All right, so now that we understand this, we see why PHP is important because we cannot create a dynamic website without having a language to process the information from the database and from that specific server on the page. All right, so in the next video, we're going to look at some basics of PHP and what it takes to actually create a system like this. I'll see you in the next video.